no matter what I do this entire time for a decade, anytime I'm in a match at all in the Indies or on TV, NXT, whatever, it, it, the Twitter comments will be, carbon copy of your brother, wow, stealing his hair and his gear. It doesn't matter. So at this point, who, who cares? There's no point. I could have red hair <laughs> and wear a tuxedo, and they'll still say, wow, dressing and acting just like him. Like, whatever, man. <laughs> Hey, nice to see you. Thanks for checking out this video. And as you saw from that little clip there off the top, this is a rare in-person interview. Oh man, when you can get tested and do these safely, it just makes me miss them so much. And before we get to it, a huge thank you to our sponsor, Tiege Hanley. And for any of the ladies that are watching right now, you already know how important skincare is. But guys, you need to get on this. Start taking care of yourself. So I'm 37, actually about to turn 38 on May 19th, in case you were planning to get me something. I started a skincare routine when I was 30, but man, I wish I had started way earlier. Tiege Hanley just makes it so insanely easy for you. Everything you need comes in this box right here, and it starts at just 25 bucks. So let me show you what comes inside that box. It's these four right here, but it's three steps. It's one, two, three. It's wash, scrub, and moisturize. You'll do it every single day, and it'll take you I don't know, a minute or two. So in the morning and before you go to bed, you will use the wash, which smells so good. Twice a week, you'll use the scrub, which actually says right on it, two times per week, facial exfoliating scrub, which digs in a little bit deeper and gets rid of some of that extra dirt and grime and junk that's on your face. I don't know what's on your face. Then after that, you'll use the moisturizer, AM moisturizer in the morning, PM moisturizer at night. And I love that the AM moisturizer has SPF 20 in it. So it's like sunscreen built right in here. And that's it. It's super easy. It's super quick and it can help you start looking younger and feeling more refreshed. Oh, and it's super affordable. It starts at just 25 bucks. And since Tiege Hanley was kind enough to sponsor today's video, click the link down below because they've got a free gift for you. Boom! That right there, a free toiletry bag. Just click the link down below. It's such a small thing to do every day, but it's a small thing that makes a huge difference. And I can't wait, like when we can see each other in person and you'll come up to me and be like, CVV, look! I am so glad that you introduced me to T. Hanley. Well, thank you for coming to my place. Hey, thanks for having me. What a place. <laughs> we are neighbors, so it's like, it wouldn't make sense to not do this in person. I think, you know, we're tested, we're safe, and uh, yeah. I was positive, were you? I was positively negative, but I guess I'm positive now. Dang, you probably have it now. Yeah, sorry, man. Oh, cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> wow. And anyone watching this. It's... Yeah. Well, that's no, how it I'm works. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. I have a, rec a streak going. Of not. Of negative. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, with the work you've been doing with AEW, you've been getting tested like crazy, I'm sure. A lot of tests before, during, and always after. Yeah. yeah. How many tests do you think you've had since this began? Uh, that is a great question. I could check probably my email. I don't know, like more than 50 probably. Oh, my gosh. Just, a lot on my own just because I personally want to know. Sure. And then when I book like stunts or acting things, uh, or if I would drive to go see my brother or something, like, I always want to test before and after. Yeah. So I don't know. I have no idea. So many. Tons. I'll, I mean, it's been almost a year now. Yeah. So what about you? Uh, two dozen, probably. Wow. it's a lot. I mean, everybody's had... I, there's probably some people who have zero, you know? But those people just stay at home the whole time. Yeah. I would hope. I hope. I would hope. Yeah. Are you? I would hope. Congratulations to you. So cool to see you on AEW. Thanks. What a blast it was. Yeah. Has been, yeah. Yeah, it's not was. It's it's in the moment right it's now. It's going, I hope, I yeah. think. Yeah, it's been really fun. What a great crew. Uh, being there is kind of like a huge reunion because I have so many friends from NXT or from other parts of wrestling that they're all just, most of them are all just there. And so walking in the locker room just felt like, oh yeah, this is not, right. this is great. It feels like home. Yeah. How did this come together for you? I went to AEW to see Amanda Huber, Brody Lee's wife, mm -hmm. and uh, her kids, basically because I knew there was going to be a birthday celebration for Brody Jr. So I thought I'll show up and kind of surprise her, say happy birthday to the boy. I used to babysit him in Tampa. No <laughs> way. Yeah. So, uh, Huge bummer, his passing, of course, and I wanted to just kind of just say hi to her. And as the old wrestling rule goes, if you're going to be around a wrestling show, always have your gear. Right. 
So, of course, I secretly had my little bag of gear, of wrestling boots and shorts. And it was nice to see her, big surprise, good to catch up. And then they said, hey, since you're here, do you want to wrestle a little bit? And I said, sure. No way. Yeah. So it was great. And she was happy about that, too. She was, like, super pumped. And I, I was, too. And all my buddies there were excited about it. And uh, instantly to be on TV, <laughs> wrestling one of the top guys there was pretty incredible. This is, like, the most serendipitous series of events to lead to you making your debut. That is exactly right. Yeah. And I think it went well. Uh, I, I blacked out, but I think I won. And if I, uh, we don't have to talk about it, if, I mean, but I, I assume that I won the match. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, you might want to go back and check the tape just to, just to see. <laughs> when I got back to town, <laughs> someone asked me, uh, they don't watch wrestling regularly, and they said, uh, <laughs> they said, how'd the match go? And I said, I got second place, so pretty good. <laughs> and they said, oh, how many people are in the match? And I said, just two. And then it hit them like, oh, sorry, man. <laughs> but I had a blast. Hangman is tough. But to make your debut on Dynamite, because so many people are making their debut on Dark, to mm -hmm. make your debut on Dynamite on national TV, that's pretty impressive. I uh, was honored to do so, yeah. I, I felt pretty cool that uh, they trusted me to do that. Yeah. How did it feel being back in the ring? Uh, felt great. I have, during the whole shutdown, been doing a lot of wrestling, just not live matches in front of crowds, more like what we were talking about earlier, just doing stunt work or yeah. wrestling, coordinating for TV shows, film, music videos, and stuff. So it's, I've had a lot of reps in the ring this whole time, just not in front of a crowd with camera. I mean, a live actual match. So it felt awesome. I just forgot how exhilarating it is. It's so yeah. addictive, man. Oh, my God. So now you just want more of it. Yeah, I can't get enough. Yeah. If I, if I don't keep wrestling, I'll die, maybe, or puke, or something. One or the other, or both. Maybe both. Maybe yeah. you'll die from the choking on the puke or something like <laughs> yeah, that. Maybe that, yeah. But it's been great. They're uh, super into you know uh, encouraging creativity, very motivational, very positive environment to be around. It's almost like all the friends from the past just in a just flourishing way more. I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. want to compare anything to anywhere else, but it was refreshing, and I kept thinking like, who here is secretly evil? There's going to be like someone tearing off a mask going, aha, we got you. But <laughs> so far that hasn't happened, and everyone seems awesome there, and they're happy to have me, and I'm happy to be there. What was the spot in that match with Hangman that you like absolutely were just so excited to get in? Um, there was a few. I really Well, a honestly, I, I started in the ring, so when you come back from commercial, Ryan's already in the ring. Yeah. And the coolest part to me was Justin Roberts, the ring announcer, giving me an introduction, which probably I shouldn't have had, but he was very generous and to give me a cool introduction. So that was pretty cool to me. Yeah, that's amazing. I yeah. was really hoping for him to call you the Hollywood hunk, Ryan Nemeth, and he didn't in the intro. Uh, but it showed up on screen. It did show up on screen. Uh, that name was reverse engineered after the match, actually, <laughs> because... <laughs> It was on my trunks that said hunk on my trunks. Yeah, hunk on my trunks. <laughs> hunk on the trunks. And uh, so, you know, the next day of tapings or after the match, I was talking to uh, oh, an, an unnamed person who said, well, you're the hunk. What kind of hunk are you? And I said, the Hollywood hunk. And then he just goes, Hollywood hunk. Perfect. Good. We'll go with that. And I was like, we'll see where that goes. And I, I guess that's the deal now. So, but you've got to understand how many similarities there are to your brother. He's from Hollywood, Florida. Sure. You're from Hollywood, California. Right. He has blonde, bleach blonde hair. You have bleach blonde hair. Does he have bleach blonde hair right now? <laughs> he currently does not have bleach blonde hair right now. There are similarities. We're related. We're brothers. We were trained literally by the exact same people in uh, wrestling. Uh, we grew up wrestling for the same school together. But I will say I've spent my entire pro wrestling career doing looking and dressing exactly the opposite of him <laughs> uh f the whole first five years of wrestling i had dyed black hair because he did have bleach blonde hair back then since then he's grown his hair out really long it's brown so i thought recently cool i'll do the opposite i'll have short blonde hair and he wears pants now i'll wear shorts we have opposite colored boots like it doesn't matter we have different names literally <laughs> no matter what i do this entire time for a decade 
anytime I'm in a match at all in the Indies or on TV, NXT, whatever, it, it, the Twitter comments will be, carbon copy of your brother while wow, stealing his hair and his gear. It doesn't matter. So at this point, who, who cares? That there's no point. I could have red hair <laughs> and wear a tuxedo, and they'll still say, wow, dressing and acting just like him. Like, whatever, man. <laughs> Sorry, we're related. That's true. Yeah, I mean, you guys do, outside of wrestling, you do, you look like your brothers. You know. It makes sense. Yeah. But have you been like, outside of wrestling, mm-hmm. wrestling aside, do you feel like, he's your older brother, do you yeah. feel like you've constantly been trying to play catch up with Nick your whole life? No, I mean, we've had pretty different lives. He, uh, even if we go way back, he was always, I mean, he was a collegiate wrestler where I focused more on uh, writing and acting in college. I, I mean, I played sports. I, was, I played rugby in college, but I was always into comedy and doing the plays, screenwriting, sketch writing, all that kind of stuff. And to then, you know, in the, in the past few years, t- to do so many of those things together has been awesome. Yeah. So he, he's in my movie Heal that I made. Uh, we do a lot of live comedy together. Not really catch up. I, I never felt like we're competing for anything. He That's does good. his thing. I do my thing. And I've really enjoyed it. All my favorite times in wrestling and comedy have been with him. So, Mm. yeah. I just, you know, sometimes there's this thing where the older brother and the younger brother Mm -hmm. are like so similar to each other. Because I'm sure you looked up to him. Yeah, of course. Yeah, still do. Yeah, I I guess I do too. Yeah, I mean, how can you not? (laughs) He's a great guy. He is a great guy. Uh, But it is funny. Okay, on that topic, I'm watching... Dustin Rhodes wrestled this past week and Cody Rhodes wrestled. And I'm thinking, okay, they do some similar moves too. No one anywhere in the world is saying that about them. Mm. And I'm l- watching the match. And, okay, and the Young Bucks, please, please tell me, what moves do they not do? And th- do they not look alike? Come on, get Well, I mean, I think there's, there's probably a good portion of like semi-regular fans that probably don't know the, the difference between Matt and Nick. Of course, sure. And I mean yeah. that with great love and respect Absolutely, for Absolutely, yeah. I'm just, they're, they're the Young Bucks. They're mm-hmm. a unit together. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think he's a great guy. <laughs> also, Dustin Rhodes is tall. Cody Rhodes is shorter. Dustin Rhodes is, like, you know, a lot older. I'm just saying, they're literally brothers on the same show doing some of the same moves. And yeah. I love them both, but you don't ever hear anyone saying anything about that. Yeah, you're But right. if I do a drop kick, I'm, uh, <laughs> I should be jailed and, you know, paying penalties. Is he the only one who does a drop kick? Is Dolph Ziggler the only one in the world? Come on. He's the only one that does a super kick as well. I don't do a super kick. I don't do yeah. a zigzag. I don't do a super <laughs> kick. I don't tune up the band. <laughs> You don't do any of that. I don't look anything like Shawn Michaels. And if everyone thinks he looks like mm. Shawn, I mean, there's, mm. I think it's, this whole debate is on my side. Just no one sees I, it that way. I agree with you. And you, you don't even have the same name anymore. We don't. We, yeah. I mean, we've never had the same name. This is true. I've never been a Ziggler. <laughs> I've been a Pierce, a Nemeth, Hot Young, never been any of those other ones. What was your reaction when you found out that that was going to be Nick's wrestling name? Oh, I was in. I was texting him all day long. We were trying to think of a name. He said something, something like, "My name is going to be Ziggler. I get to pick my first name. What do you think it should be?" And we were trying. We were thinking of so many. And honestly, what is a good first name for that? It's hard, man. So, Nick's a pretty good first name for that. Nick Ziggler. That'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be all right. But uh, <laughs> I guess it's Dolph. Sure. So did you come up with Dolph? No, I was pitching some other ones. I don't remember what it was. But oh, I'd love to hear that. I, I mean, we could maybe find the list somewhere if that's still... Like, that was a long time ago at this point. But uh, when it was settled on DZ, I, I designed the, the original logo for, that was on his trunks for a while, the DZ with the devil tail. and Yeah, Arizona. yeah. I felt pretty cool. That was in the video game, I think. I was playing that thinking, yeah, I made that. Yeah. You're like, I'm not making any money. I'm not getting paid this. for this and never getting credit. <laughs> and this will be a good you know, thing to know for when I worked there. It'll be the same. <laughs> You'll never get credit or paid for this. Were you always into wrestling? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We loved wrestling. Uh, my dad used to take us to see at the Gund Arena in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. We used to see any time they would come to town. And my brother and I would go see ECW when they came because it was not a parent-friendly environment, <laughs> really. And uh, we would see the Cleveland All Pro. We would see every. We'd go see everything. Yeah. I've met your dad. He is like. I think he might be more jacked than both of you guys put together. Yeah, he's like. He looked like Lance Storm. I've always yeah, thought that. Yeah. How, how like is he? Just, has he just been really into fitness? He got a solo flex when we were little kids. I don't know if you, anyone remembers what a solo flex is. It's like the bow flex, right? Like the the first version of the yeah. bow flex. Yeah. 
and he would just we would see him working out all the time and i thought it was awesome i rem like so it was years ago when i was working in cleveland and he came over to the tv station i did an interview with nick and i met him i'm like like you should be the wrestler <laughs> like he's He's jacked. There's little. There's photos of us as tiny little kids at the petting zoo, you know, just looking like tiny little kids. And my dad is just so jacked with the tiny little sleeves, like the little shorts. Lit. Like, he was <laughs> so muscular, man. Yeah. I don't know at this point if he would... Yeah, to me, he still is. I always, When I see Lance Storm, I just think, that looks like my dad. That's, wow. Yeah. So were you always into working out? I got into working out probably at age 13 or 14 when, well, I, young. when I started doing like wrestling stuff. Well, I guess before that, I would go on the solo flex and do what I could do, which is limited if you're a kid. You can do like pull-ups and hanging ab crunches maybe, but the rest of it's too much for a child. And so rugby was your sport? Well, I wrestled okay. grade school yeah. through high school, and then when I went to university, Xavier University, started playing rugby. You started playing rugby in your Yeah, wrestling? I just, I knew they didn't have a wrestling team and I was kind of there for other things, but I wanted to be active and physical and yeah. that seemed like so weird to me, but a few of my friends were doing it and they said, all right, I'll try it. And I went to one practice and I thought, this is cool. I get to mm. tackle people. Great. Yeah. So what, what were you going to school for? I was doing um, English and art double majors. So I wanted to probably get into screenwriting or comedy or something, something like something show business related. Yeah. And was that always the goal, the dream growing up that you wanted to work? You wanted to work in Hollywood. Well, I wanted to do something that entertained people. I didn't quite know what it was. I didn't know if it was writing or acting or comedy or whatever. So it was kind of like anything in that category, I just need to be pushed that way, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So if we take it back, were you the kid like starring in the high school play or, or were you in the drama club? The truth is not really until college did I get involved in doing live things like that. Hmm. I think I did, there was an acting class and I thought, well, I need, I have one more credit to fill this semester. I'll try an acting class. And it was like after one class, I thought, oh my God, I'm obsessed with this. <laughs> and I should have been doing it all throughout high school, I yeah. thought. And I started spending summers in Chicago doing uh, like improv classes at IO and you know like checking out IO and Second City and thought this now my brain is expanded again like mm. holy crap and then Nick was at OVW so Wednesday nights me and guys from the rugby team would drive to Louisville watch him wrestle drive back and like we just had a blast and then I started to think whoa wrestling is kind of like this improv stuff just physical mm. which never crossed my mind I just thought that's his thing, you know, I like to watch it, but this is his thing. And it was kind of like near the second half of college, I started to think, whoa, maybe I could do this. Hmm. And yeah, I'm getting ahead of the story maybe right now. No, no, yeah. it doesn't, there's, there's, no, uh, there's no path on this story. But you're, you're about, you know, when you're going to school at Xavier, you're about two hours-ish from OVW yeah. in Louisville. I always freak, like some people say Louisville, then people from there say Louisville. Yeah, they say it. So I like, can't, I can't, I would never try to be an imposter and speak like them. I lived there for a year at some point and never said it right, and I understand that. So where was the plan, all right, I, I like wrestling. This is really interesting to me. I'm going to start to train at OVW. The plan was, I was thinking either that or I'm going to Chicago like, and going full into acting and improv and really going to, like, there's, I saw two paths very mm. much in front of me. And, you know, we've all been there where we're dating someone that leads us down a different path. So <laughs> the girl I was dating was like, I'm moving to Chicago to become a nurse. And I thought, all right, fine, I'll go there and I'll do comedy. And, like, there it is. Yeah. And... Basically, right when I got there, I thought, like, this is wrong. I should be wrestling. This sucks, man. <laughs> really? Yeah. But I, I tried to, like, um, stick it out for a few months. And there was one day, and he would, Nick would be touring there. You know, SmackDown would come there. We'd go see him, and I would hang out with him afterwards and just think, man, I really want to be wrestling. I don't want to be here. What's the deal? And he would say, he would give me a little bit of advice, you know, either go to Lance Storm School or go to OVW, like, just learn from someone good. Yeah. And there's one day I came home from my gym job I had and walked into uh, my girlfriend's house. And I said, we need to talk. And she just oh, looks no. up and she says, you're going to start wrestling with your brother, aren't you? And just move out of Chicago. And I said, <laughs> <laughs> I said, I guess we don't need to talk. You, yeah, you, <laughs> you pretty much covered it. Yeah, you got it. Well, Nick's path was so interesting. Like Nick didn't have to decide, like, I'm going to pick a wrestling school and go there. Like, yeah. He got scouted because yeah, he was yeah. so good at amateur wrestling at Kent State University. His dream since child, since we would go see wrestling, he wanted to be a wrestler, that kind of wrestler. 
And so it's kind of funny, his whole amateur wrestling career is a little bit of a fake out because he was just doing that to get to WWF at the time, you know? Which is wild. So wild. And like so many amateur wrestling people would think like they're mad about that. And I just think, how could he be mad at that? Like all he did was do great and encourage more people to watch that sport. Like how is that bad? But, and was it Jim Ross that scouted him? Um, I think it was Briscoe. Oh, Joe wow. Joe Briscoe, yeah, who, who probably passed the info on to Jim Ross, I think. And I don't know if people appreciate just how good Nick was in his amateur career. Like, he is a Kent State Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer, most wins in his career, set the record for that, most pins in a season. He didn't have a scholarship, just walked onto the team and became team captain. Like, <laughs> Yeah, he was awesome. I used to love in high school going to watch his meets, too. We would drive up and watch him. But I would, down. I would imagine that a lot of amateur wrestlers get that call from Gerald Briscoe or WWE or whoever, and they go, yeah, like uh, definitely, yeah. No, thank you. There, a lot of them are insulted by that, and they think this is making a mockery of a we do. Yeah. When the reality is, the two are not related at all. Yeah. Like literally unrelated. But it just ha- so happens that if you're really good at one, you may be good at the other. I imagine for Nick, though, it's like ah, this is the call I've been waiting for my definitely. whole life. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So you decide you're going to leave Chicago. Yeah. And it's straight down to OVW? I did a little interim stay in Cleveland where I saved up some money and did a little training at, uh, it was called Firestorm Pro, which I don't think exists anymore. But they had a ring set up at the Fantasy Nightclub permanently. So I would go sometimes with their classes and try to learn how to bump or hit the ropes. But mostly when Nick was in town, we would we would sneak in late at night. I would get the keys, and he would just go with me alone and teach me how to do certain things. So that was like my first pro wrestling training was sort of with him secretly in a haunted nightclub, <laughs> like late at night. Was this nightclub not like functioning as a nightclub anymore? I think they would have concerts and they would have wrestling shows, but most of the time, like during the week, there's nothing happening there. So the ring would just be in there all the time. Wow. Yeah, but and I we were a little spooked because we would hear ghost stories about how the place is haunted and stuff. So. <laughs> And I would go sometimes alone, and then I very quickly stopped doing that because I we're very you know superstitious in that way. I guess if a yeah. building is spooky, it's a hundred years old, and to to like turn the light off and get to the door that you leave to lock was like a giant distance. So you had to turn the light off and then like just kind of make your way blindly through this dark haunted hall. Oh man, it was spooky. <laughs> I don't want to do that again. And I would go alone sometimes and be hitting the ropes just doing oh, basic man. things, and I swear I would hear something and look up and just think, all right, I'm out of here, let's go, like, gotta leave, man. man. So if we follow your path, it's from Cleveland. Then Kentucky. To, to Cincinnati. Oh, oh, Cincinnati for to school. To Chicago. Yes. Back to Cleveland. Yep. Then to Kentucky for OVW. Yes. yes, yes. So you're training in OVW, and I think a big thing that people need to realize here is you're picking up your life, and you're going to move it. It's about six-ish hours from Cleveland to Kentucky. Yeah, really far away. I think I sold the car that I had. I, I flew there with nothing. Oh, you flew there? Flew there with, like, a duffel bag. And a couple hundred bucks I saved up and just thought, like, I'm somehow going to become a wrestler. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Yeah. How were you going to pay for wrestling school? I got a job at LA, what was called Urban Active, I think. Okay. You, at the time. Yeah. As a personal trainer. And I lived a few miles from OVW, the building. And I bought, I think the second day there, I went to, to Walmart and bought a bicycle. So I thought, I don't have a car at this point. I'm going to ride to wrestling practice and back. Hope that they, you know, accept me as a student. I mean, <laughs> I hope so. Uh, you didn't even know that they would accept you. I, a lot of this was just, I'm going to do this. I was pretty determined. I just thought this will happen. This. Yeah, I just, I just, in my mind, I thought this can't not happen. I want it to happen, so it will. And got a bike, started riding back and forth, training there, uh, won a scholarship. I did some contests where it was all new people from out of town, and I, I won that to be like the guy that they, I can go to the advanced class now, so I was training with the Rip Rogers advanced class. I was also going to the beginner's class to try to, I just want to wrestle constantly. So four days of training a week, two days of shows, one TV day, basically every day of the week I was training or wrestling or helping build the ring or whatever. I just wanted to be around it all the time. So take me to the first day when you don't know that they're going to accept you. Mm -mm. Do you show up and knock on the door and go, yeah, hi, my name's Ryan. I'm looking to train here. So a lot of us showed up to, to try to win this scholarship for some day, some event they had. And we were all just nervously standing outside the building. <laughs> and no one knows anyone here. We're all just kind of confused. And at some point after an hour of waiting, this, this old guy like opens the door, looks at all of us, says some kind of insult, just shuts the door again. And we're like, okay, I guess we'll just stay out here longer. And then an hour goes by again, and then he lets us in. 
and uh, I think he was just having messing with us a little. And uh, that was day one of the tryout. We we got went in there and got into a wrestling ring for the first time. And I thought, man, this thing is not like the indie ring in Cleveland. It's so big. These are real ropes. They hurt really badly, you know. <laughs> and Danny Davis and Rip Rogers became my first trainers there. And it was awesome. I was hooked. Really, after just being in a very solid ring in a building that I have been in so many times before to watch matches, and I knew how many people were trained there. I knew Cena, Randy Orton, Batista, all these guys and girls came out of there who just went on to have amazing careers. My brother. Yeah. And uh, another fun part is I was riding my bike there to practice one day, and this car shows up with a flat tire. (laughs) (laughs) And some guy gets out of the car who I think... Wow, that looks a lot like Jim Cornette, but it's probably not him. And this guy is swearing up a storm about his flat tire, goes in the building, slams the door, screaming you know, about his car. And I'm like, wow, that guy's pretty mad. And I remember I texted Nick, some guy who looks like Jim Cornette is pretty pissed off about his flat tire. And he said, do you think it is Jim Cornette? And I said, nah, I don't think so. He's too tall. And I got in there and found out that is Jim Cornette. He's pissed off about his tire. And I'm going to kind of you know, stay far away from him at the moment. <laughs> So when you're in OVW and you're doing the wrestling training, yeah. have you put the acting and the writing and comedy all on hold at this point? Still doing some writing, but mainly focusing on, like, I'm pretty tunnel vision at this point, yeah. Mm. And, and, and is the goal WWE or bust? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I thought this is the best path to do it. Moving to Canada for Lance Storm School seemed, like, way harder than just showing up in a different state. I mean, they're, they're both pretty hard to do. <laughs> well, but. the thing is, when you go to Lance's school, they're not having... Like, OVW has shows every week. Yeah, constantly, yeah. Yeah. Whereas Lance's is like, it's it's hardcore training for, I think it's three months. And then it's like, all right, you're ready yeah. to go. So, that, so a lot of factors, and that was definitely one of them. And I just thought, I can spend six months, a year, however long I want here, and I know I'll get a lot of reps in front of a crowd. Because yeah. they, they just, they're one of the last actual territories and the world yeah, where they tour all around and they're on TV and they have their TV show. Yeah. yeah. So I thought no matter what happens, I'll get a really good experience here. And you were working under your real name there. Yeah. It was Ryan Nemeth and had no clue what I was, what I was doing, but Jim, <laughs> Jim Cornette thought that I was handsome and had a good body. So he'll be on TV instantly. And <laughs> I was like, I had no business doing this at all, but I was, I was, Tag champ, like, multiple times, rookie of the year instantly. I was only there for half a year. I think I lived there for six months and, like, was really put in a lot of fortunate positions and worked with a lot of good wrestlers and uh, very quickly uh, taken to NXT or FCW at the time. So your debut match in OVW was against Big E. And who else? Well, I guess that's... No, wait, that's FCW. Oh, that's FCW. So who were you in OVW with? OVW, my debut TV match was against... Cliff Compton, who is Domino and Deuce and Domino. Okay, right okay. And there's a lot of controversy about this match because he put me in a submission and I was going to tap, but I did not tap. Mm. And Joe Wheeler, the referee, called for the bell. And I was like... Screw job. I thought I was going to tap, but I didn't. So technically, what the hell? Mm. And, and Cliff will often text me a picture of that moment and say, <laughs> you tapped. And I'll say, no, I didn't. I won't. Joe Wheeler screwed me. Who else were you training with there that we might recognize? Uh, Mikey from the Spirit Squad, Mike Mondo. Um, let me see who else. Uh, geez, Paradise, who is now a producer for NXT. He was my tag partner. Um, I don't know. God, this has been a while now. <laughs> I was just so quickly well, when you, left. When you go to FCW, there's tons of names that we recognize yeah, there. Yeah, FCW, but, definitely. But how did you get their attention? How did you get, like, that's a huge bump up. Uh, They were coming to scout some talent. So there was one weekend in which we knew WWE, Impact, and Ring of Honor were all coming, like, in the same two days to just check out what does OVW have at the moment, like, who's there. Mm. And Ring of Honor was doing tapings at our building, so we were, I was working sometimes with Ring of Honor talent on their show. It was fun. It was a fun time. Yeah. Being at OVW was one of the most fun times in wrestling for me ever. It was just so fun. Uh, and so the tryout was we would wrestle in front of Ring of Honor, Scouts, Impact, and, and then finally in the last day, John Laurinaitis, who was the head of talent at the time, came to watch us, and we wrestled matches and cut promos. Well, we cut a promo if they wanted us to, so I think Danny Davis maybe said, I would really like Ryan to do one, and John liked that. 
And afterwards, I think he came up to me and there was just this long line of people waiting to talk to him. And he just walked away from all of them and came to me. And I felt like, yeah, <laughs> that's got to be a good sign. And he said, hey, uh, what, are, what are you doing for a living here, like to make money? And I said, oh, I'm a personal trainer. And he said, how much do you make doing that? And I told him, which a uh, very low figure at the time, <laughs> but it was a job and things sure. were cheap in Louisville. I was, you know, I yeah. liked it. And he said, have you ever been to Florida? And I was like, whoa, come on, this is leading me on now. <laughs> and I said, yeah, you know, once or twice. Would you ever consider living in Tampa? And I said, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's <laughs> literally the reason I'm here right now is so you will say this, yes. And he says, yeah, how about you come work for us there then? And I said, uh-huh, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> he said, cool, nice to meet you. You're asking, what, what do I weigh? How big am I? How big am I compared to my brother physically or whatever? Those kind of questions. And uh, then he just disappeared, and this whole line of people was very upset, I think. <laughs> but I felt cool as hell. And then I just didn't hear anything for weeks. And I would ask my brother, like, do I work there now? What do I do? Yeah. Like, what's happening? And he's like, I don't know, man. Because <laughs> that company is just <laughs> such a mystery. Wrestling in general is a mystery. People say those kind of things and then just disappear. And that's what r literally happened. So I think weeks went by. And then finally someone from Connecticut called me and said, hey, we'd like to, you to come to Tampa for a two-week two tryout or a week-long tryout or something like that. And I thought, okay, A, that's pretty cool. B, I thought I already worked there. Like, what? <laughs> he literally said out loud, why don't you come work for us in Florida, which I guess translated to someday you'll have a tryout in Florida and we'll see. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, then I flew there for a week, wrestled with them for a week, trained with everybody. I had great experiences with, like, Norman Smiley and Dr. Tom Pritchard and Dusty Rhodes. Thought I was cool. I mean, I think I, he thought I was cool at the time. And... A few weeks after that, then I was home thinking, now am I going to work? Like, what? Yeah, How do you yeah. find out? And there's no, like, email to, like, ask. I was just a mystery. I have a brother who works there and is a champion probably at the time, and he doesn't know. So <laughs> at some point, somebody called me in the middle of a training session. I saw the number, and I was like, I'm sorry. I got to take this call. And I, like, went to the gym hallway, and my gym manager at the time watched me. And he goes, are you getting signed right now? And I said, I think so. I think so, you know? <laughs> and he was like, cool, 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 because he was a wrestler, and he, you know, uh... And then a few weeks later, I just moved to Florida and then wow. started working there, yeah. So, and how long were you in Tampa for? I'm sure their process now is much more streamlined and normal, but back then it was kind of like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was in Tampa for like three years, I think. It was FCW and then became, came NXT like yeah. halfway through my time. Yeah, there. and then how quickly did you get a new name? Uh, a few weeks into it. So before my first match, I, gave, I was giving them a list of names every day and... The office, the little office dweeb. Sorry, I'm not gonna name him. I think this guy sucked. He was, I mean, I didn't like him. This guy. He would look. See. He would look at the sheet of paper. He would look at it for less than one second and go, "These all sound indie," and hand it back to me. And I thought, "You didn't read one name on this page, and there's 80 names on there." He would just take it and go, "Too indie. Think of new ones." Wow. Just nobody. This guy sucked, man. He'd be great in real life, but at the building, just was so lame. Ah, oh. so lame. Uh, so eventually, I think I was eating dinner with uh, Damian Sandow somewhere, and I got a text that was like, you're either going to be Nathan or Briley. Which one do you like? And I thought, they're both pretty good, but Briley's really weird. And it's secretly the last name of Danny Davis, who trained me in Kentucky, so I think that would be cool. Mm. Like a secret little wrestling reference yeah, that yeah. no one will get. And it's strange, so I went with that one. So I was Briley Pierce. Yeah, and then you were hot young. I added hot young, mm. yeah. I started doing Hot Young in OVW. I would get to the ring announcer and say, hey, call me this name. And she would be like, am I allowed to? And I would say, yeah, yeah, yeah. They said it's cool, which a lot of wrestling is like that. You just pretend that's what's happening and someone goes along with it. So you were originally Hot Young, <laughs> hot young Ryan, Ryan Nemeth. Nemeth. Yeah. And then Hot Young Bradley Pierce. And then uh, I had a great time. We were tag champs right away. Uh, got to wrestle. got to main event, like a lot of house shows with... Um, I don't know which names to use. I'll just use what they were then. Sure, we'll uh, figure it out. Cesaro, Dean Ambrose, Sandow, and I was teaming with people like Xavier Woods, and you know it was so fun. What a yeah, fun a lot time of talent. Was, yeah, in FCW at that time, huge. Yeah, and uh, yeah, basically we had anyone that's on TV right now was pretty much mostly in FCW with me back then. Wow, yeah. 
And your Twitter name is still Hot Young Briley. Yes. We were messaging about this. Yeah, yeah. So when you're debuting on, on AEW Dynamite, mm -hmm. it says, Ryan Nemeth, Hot, Hot Young, Young Briley. Briley. So good. <laughs> like, people are probably like, oh, what's that mean? The, Ryan Nemeth already taken. Someone has already got Ryan Nemeth, Hot Young Ryan Nemeth, Rye Ryan Nemeth. Like, any combination I want to use is already taken and has my face on it from some... Well, I think then, I think then you say to Twitter, like, Hey, that oh, yeah? one's me. Can I do that? Yes, of course. Oh. I looked at this. Your name on Instagram is Rai Rai Nemeth, so you can follow him. Rai Rai Nemeth. The Rai Rai Nemeth account on Twitter. Well, no, wait, careful. On Instagram, it's Rai Rai Nem Nem. Oh. Because Rai Rai Nemeth is another fake one. Jeez. They, you people are awful. They cover it all. And, wow. then, and then they trick my family. They'll have babies, get married. And so I have uncles calling me going, hey, congrats on the baby. And I'm like, what? Dude, I don't have, I'm not married. I don't have a baby. This is not real. <laughs> So Rai Ryan Nemeth on Twitter, in his bio, says this is a fake account. So I feel like you should be able to go to Twitter and go, hey, this is my name. Oh. And this person is clearly, they have this fake account. They I would used. love to change. I would love to take the real name, yeah. All right, well, somebody Great. watching this is going to help you out. I hope this so. happen. Just report. Which one do you want them to report? All of them. Okay, report them all. Rai Rai Nemeth. Boot them all. Rai Rai Nem Nem. The one I really Ryan want Nemeth. hasn't been used in like eight years, so I'm just like, come on, dude, let me have that. Which one's that? I think that's Rai Rai Nem Nem. That's the one I really want. Okay. I like how that sounds. You really want Rai Rai Nem Nem. And there it is. Come on, man. Let's all report that one and say, this is a fake account. Does Twitter watch this? Does no, no, no. Everyone watching this is going to report, report it. it. Nice. And then they're going to get like hundreds of reports on this account, and they're going to go, huh. We should shut down this fake yeah, account. Yeah, shut it down. Give it to me. This is the plan. Let me have Okay, it. we're going to make this happen. There it is. Excellent. Yeah, and while everybody's watching, they and can also... Also, Hollywood hunk is taken everywhere. Well, which I can understand yeah, that Yeah, I'm a little late on that one. Yeah. Again, you know, it's... These things happen. It, it happens. It happens. So you're in NXT. Yes. How, how, does thing, how do you go from being working with all these great people in NXT to it just not working out for you there? Um, it was working great for me there while Dr. Tom Pritchard was head coach and John Laurinaitis was in charge of talent. I was uh, getting treated greatly, or fairly. Mm -hmm. uh, Dusty Rhodes thought I was cool, and it was similar to the Jim Cornette experience back in OVW, which was, he's good at talking and he's handsome. He's going to be on TV right away, and you'll learn to wrestle as you go. And that was going great for me. Yeah, uh, They literally had a top ten list of talent back then, and I was like three, I think, which I felt I felt I don't really deserve to be third at this amazing group of people, but cool, I'll take it. And then almost overnight, someone else took over talent, someone else became head coach, and I didn't exist anymore, basically. No way. Yeah, so that's all. That's just what happens in any kind of show business thing. If someone else shows up and they like other people, see ya. Wow. Right. Yeah, so. When the new coach took over, it was super clear to me that this man did not like me or that he didn't like my brother and had some things. It was some kind of weird, you know, that's just how wrestling goes. But he's not there anymore, though. He's not there a anymore. A lot of people don't like this person yeah. you're speaking about. And uh, again, certain people I don't even like the name and give credit to, cause, uh, but I would call him coach to his face in a way that really... To me, it was always like, you don't deserve to be a coach. You're not good at the coach, and you suck as a coach. Hmm. Hey, coach. Like, just to rub it in, like, I hope you feel every time I say coach. I don't believe it. I hope, like, I'm just saying it, you know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. So I was, I remember the phone call I got from the, the guy who is the office guy. I don't know if he's still there. I have no idea. Probably still. And a few months before, I had spoken to him and said, hey, I think this coach doesn't like me and I'm kind of screwed. And this executive at the time said, I can confirm that. That is true. And oh I said, my gosh. so you know that I'm doing really well, but the reports you get are changed to say I'm not doing well. He goes, yes, I've gathered that much. And I said, is there anything I can do about this? And he said, I'm not sure. No way. <laughs> and as he called me to release me from my contract, I said, hey, you remember a few months ago when we had that talk? And he said, yep. And I said, is that what's happening now? And he goes, yep. And I said, kind of like, what the hell, yeah. dude? But, uh, and that is just how wrestling works. He basically said out loud, like, yes, you're getting fake fired, and I can't stop it, and whatever. And I'm like, cool, dude, thanks. <laughs> wow. So was it immediately back to Cleveland then? No, never back to Cleveland, only to visit. Uh, so then did you go, all right, were you a little bit jaded from wrestling then? The phone call actually was, it was interesting. He said, 
he said, we think you're probably, like, some people you let go, or we think you're going to, you know, go to Japan and do whatever. Some people will do never wrestle again. We think you're probably going to go to Hollywood and start being, excelling in that world. And I thought, yeah, that's probably true. Cool dude, thanks. See ya, you know. Uh, and I moved one month later to L.A. and just started trying to go full, full hog and acting and writing stuff, yeah. And were you done at that point with wrestling? I did sporadic wrestling here and there. and A then little there bit was, of indie wrestling. Yeah, and then I got really into indie shows and running my own promotion with my girlfriend at the time, too, to raise money for charity. I mean, there's wrestling always happening. And luckily in Hollywood, there's always something being shot about wrestling or that involves wrestling, so been very involved with wrestling still. I would do tours in Australia for House of Hardcore with Dreamer. I, I was wrestling sporadically, yeah. you know, and really enjoying it. Enjoying it way more than I was in NXT at the second half of it, actually. And, yeah, all right. Sorry, I'm No, rambling. no, please. It's, it's your show. How many, how, so how long have you been here in Hollywood? Been here for, I think, seven years. It's always longer than I think. I always want to say, like, three years, but no, nah, it's been a while now. So yeah. when you decided to leave Florida, did you, like, Pack up? Uh, did you have a car? Did you pack up a car and drive out here? Yeah. Uh, right. Well, I shipped the car and flew. I think. I okay. I met the car in Phoenix. And did you? Well, where your brother lives. Mm -hmm. Did you have any friends out here? Did you have I any connections? I had a few friends. I had uh, John Morrison lived here, and the guy who is now Luchasaurus lived here, mm -hmm. and that might be it. Wow. I sort of knew Johnny Laquasto, like barely. So I knew like three people here, yeah. This is like everybody's Hollywood story. It's like, I, <laughs> it's seriously, I know one or two people, but I'll figure it out when I get out there. I mean, but to me, this was just like, I did the same thing in Kentucky, sort of did the same thing in Florida, like yeah. I'll, I'll figure it out, yeah. Yeah, and, it, and when you come to LA, you realize that everybody's kind of in that same boat. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of like open to like, oh yeah, well just yeah. come grab a drink with us or grab some pizza with us, like we'll figure it out together. And I made fast friends with the crew at Second City, uh, like Brett Gunnell, Sam Richardson, all those guys, they had a, a weekly show that involved the idea of wrestling, sort of. They'd have a wrestler guest each time oh. who would tell a story and they would do improv and sketches about it. And I, I guested with them one time, hosted it. And then they said, hey, do you just want to be in this? Because you have that improv background and we think you're great. And so I just started playing with them. So that was cool mm. to get in with like things like that felt really started to feel like a yeah. home yeah I, I may be naive because i've only been here less than a year but i feel like there it's easy to find your tribes of people here like yeah. if you're into comedy yeah, you know, start hanging out if it was open mm -hmm. at the comedy store yeah. or, you know at some other comedy place if you like acting start taking acting lessons and then you start to find people who are like-minded just like you definitely i started to i got in with like a few worlds like gold's gym venice was a world i got really into Got into UCB and Second City pretty hard core, like, and then I had my wrestling friends also. So I had a like, yeah. pretty, it was awesome. I loved it. Yeah. Did you work out with Mike O'Hearn? He's at Gold's all the time. He was always there. We didn't work out together, but yeah. He's a large man. Very large man. He's we a would, very large we would say man. hi. Yeah. What was your first real break, if you will, in the oh, film, man. filmmaking, film writing, acting? Break? Let's see. My first break was the Venmo commercial I did. Can we find this somewhere? Yeah, it's on YouTube. It's probably on their Instagram. I was, I remember getting flown to Vancouver, shooting like multiple spots. And I was so excited because I thought, this is the first national commercial I'll be in. This is awesome. And my girlfriend at the time was like, you know, if this was Union, you'd be making so much more money. You're on TV constantly. They played at the World Series. There's banners. And I, I didn't know the difference between Union or non-Union at the time. I was just psyched. Yeah. Um, Can you give us your line from the commercial? <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I had lines and then I started making them up because I thought they wanted us to, to ad lib a little bit. <laughs> and I, I remember at some point the director was like, hey, and this time just stick to the lines this time. And I was like, oh, all right. But I thought he said, I mean, I'm not going to argue with that. Sure. Um, I think I come out of the door of the bar and I say, oh, this happens every time. And it was about, it, it was a Venmo commercial. So the idea was, oh, now we can pay each other and split the tab much easier. Ah. Uh. And then magically ponies appeared and we were all standing on ponies because the slogan was pony up. Ah. Oh. And then there's a few other ones where we were like in a, a, a juice bar or eating pizza. And we had to film with these ponies or they were actually mini horses. The animal trainer was very mad that we were calling them ponies. <laughs> <laughs> he was pissed. <laughs> and they just did not, after a few hours, they just don't want to be there anymore. And so the, right. they would just start moving around and you'd fall, you know. Oh my gosh. And you couldn't really sit on them because they were too small. So you had to like stand, you had to like do a half squat the whole, it was very hard actually. <laughs> and 
this is like hour 11 and they'll say cut and as soon as they like whisper cut to not spook the, oh, the horses right. they would just start walking off so they would say cut and i would just fall oh man it was brutal for those animals man. and it was pretty i like i thought i felt cool though you know that, um, that's a pretty big break it really a national commercial it came on during the simpsons which is my favorite show so i felt very cool about that and they had my friends who went to the world series that year uh, they were in Chicago at Wrigley Field going, dude, there's, you're on banners at the World Series. And I thought, yeah, sweet. <laughs> what else what, might we have seen you in? Um, let's see. A few other commercials. That was the biggest commercial. Are you I Union think. now? Union now for a couple of years now. Oh, I was in an Xfinity commercial with Amy Poehler this past year. Look uh, at this guy. I played a lifeguard. I felt very cool about that. Um, Can we find that one online too? That's easy to find online. Okay, yeah. there we go. Uh, the show AP Bio, NBC's AP Bio. Uh, I believe it's on Peacock now. Uh, this past season, I am a wrestler in it, and I also worked as wrestling consultant and did work. You know, put together all the stunts, cast, got all the wrestlers cast, and put you know the sequences together. It was very fun. Trained, uh, helped train some of the main actors in that show at how to wrestle, which was very fun. So yeah. fulfilling to put the two worlds together. You know. Yeah. It's, that's a word, that's something you've been doing a lot of. Yeah. So how do you break into that world where you go, I can be the guy who can train Well, actually, you. AP Bio was probably the first time. Um, they, well, they hired you because you were a wrestler? Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. So I shot, my, I'll give a little clue of the, the film Heel that I made. We, yeah, we'll get into a whole bunch of that here. To do the stunt coordinating for that, we had Chavo Guerrero, who is a great family friend and who does fight coordinating for GLOW or had been doing fight coordinating for GLOW. And... He was like my brother's first kind of really good mentor, tag partner in WWE. Yeah. And Kerwin White. Kerwin White. Yeah. Yep. And to have him working on that with me was awesome. He helped get me in with Glow for the final season of Glow, which is not to be, but you know. <laughs> That's uh, too bad. Yeah, but AP Bio. So they, I, didn't, I knew some of the people from just getting to know Second City and UCB and like Chicago improv people who are all sort of a generation ahead of me, but knew that I lived here and was likable and knew wrestling. So they said, will you come into the writer's room and talk to us? We're thinking about writing an episode about wrestling. And a lot of the people in the writer's room were people who had seen me wrestle at Nuclear Heat, our, our indie show we were running, or uh, just knew me from improv stuff. And I, I gave them all the key terms to use, like things that would and wouldn't happen in wrestling locker rooms. Like we spent a couple hours and it was so fun. You're like a consultant. I was consultant, yeah. yeah. So, uh, like a month later, a few weeks later, the the line producer called me and said, "Hey, would you like to come on as wrestling consultant? And we'll pay you this much. And here's you'll just be like on call for this month of shooting before pre-production. Yeah. And then would you also come in and you know run the stunt portion of the wrestling? Help us cat. Basically, we need wardrobe, a wrestling ring." <laughs> Um, look over the script dialogue to see if it makes sense, uh, cast wrestling extras, train everybody. And I, I thought, like, this is awesome. This is my dream right now to, like, put wrestling and have it represented in a way that I think makes sense and is not going to get the wrestling business mad at me. Hmm. And have it just be very true to what's really happening. And uh, that went so well. It was awesome. I, that's amazing yeah. how that came together. And then since then, I've done maybe three or four more of the similar thing for music videos or apps that are making wrestling things or movie, whatever. Yeah, it's been really cool to be. Hopefully, that's an ongoing thing. I really like it. You sent me a link so I could watch Heal. Yes, which is your Heal. short film, which you wrote and you produced. Yes, and you starred in. And it, I was so impressed. Thank you. I was so impressed with number one how great the story is. But also how good you and everybody else is is in it, and it was very well directed as well. But the story, like with what was going on in the wrestling world last year with speaking out, it feels like it's like coming out at the exact perfect time. Thanks for saying those nice things. Uh, That's true. Maggie Levin was the director, and she was just so good, man. Right, I showed her the script when it was in its longer form, like a you know second or third draft and she said yo let's meet to talk about this and I knew she was about to direct a feature film and she said I'm about to do a feature film but I want this to be the final short film I direct I want to direct this so bad are you down with it and mm. I just I was like yeah <laughs> yes I'm down with that dude <laughs> as if I would say no yes I love everything she's made and I knew that she was about to take off and be way too busy so I thought yeah 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 let's do this uh-huh right so how much can we say about 
what the plot of this film is. Uh, the plot of the film deals with sexual assault in the world of indie wrestling, and uh, it's kind of too short of a movie to give anything else away, <laughs> but it deals with that. And, and I, I will say that when you watch it, it feels like the situations that we heard about last year with Speaking Out. Well, it comes from a, real, a very real place. There was a time when I was doing a lot of indie wrestling, and I just suddenly was kind of like ambushed with awful stories about assault in the indie wrestling world. And it was just way too close to home for me. And that's why I took a break from all wrestling at all. I just thought I am too grossed out by this to keep being a part of it. Yeah. And I know it's not everywhere, but it was like really close to home for me. Yeah. And uh, I said, I need to do something. I can't really like speak on behalf of these women because for a number of reasons. Actually, let's take this time to address people on Twitter who will say to me, Ryan, if you knew about all this, why didn't you say something? You're just as guilty. No, I'm fucking not. You can't speak on behalf of uh, victims. That's not my story to tell. Uh, legally, just think about that, man. Just think of how much trouble I'd be in legally if I decided to do something like that. Victims themselves would have every right to sue me or whatever, you know? Uh, thirdly... There are ways that I can help and contribute. That is not one of them. This is, you yeah. know, using art or film as a way to start a conversation about things that are happening, and hopefully that encourages things to change. So you wrote this basically saying, I'm disgusted with some yes. of the stuff that I've seen or heard about in the wrestling world, yeah. and I just need to get this out there. Yeah, I love pro wrestling, and I love the people in it, and... There are some bad eggs who do some heinously bad stuff and get away with it year after year, month after month, show after show. Yeah. And uh, there's not one solution to that. Mm. But this is one that I can personally try to help with. Is the idea here that this short may become a feature? I would love it to become a feature or a series or something. And if, it, if the, the worst thing that happens is that a lot of people watch it, that's great too, you know. Like, well, people can't. They can watch it soon, right? It will. So we crowdfunded it, and um, it was a massively successful worldwide campaign. We raised in thirty days, like sixty-five thousand dollars from like wow. really generous people. And the I think the average pledge was like twenty bucks. So it's a lot of people. Yeah, it's a lot of people. Yeah, and I really appreciate. It. If any of you are watching, thank you so much. <laughs> sure, for they making, are. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So this is going to start debuting at film festivals. Yes, and it's been in a few that have streamed online and. As they happen this year, I'll post about them everywhere. Uh, so it's kind of unfortunate that it's not going to be in person for a lot of these fests just because of COVID and everything. But it's more accessible if you can watch it in a festival that's playing in Florida and you live in Indiana. Like, you don't have to go to Florida. You right. know? So there's good and bad. <laughs> but the thing about fe the festival circuit is your film can be in those festivals for quite a while. Yeah. So there's a chance that hopefully towards the end of the year, if things get better that this can start to be in in-person festivals. Yeah. I hope. I so hope. We're all, we're all, and Florida, you know, everything's open there for some yeah, reason. Yeah, so maybe <laughs> if there's one in Florida, we'll be fine. Uh, I know that, like, many months ago, the Cleveland International Festival already announced, like, next year streaming no matter what. And I just No like, way! Oh, I mean, it's cool, but, like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Because I I that's, like, my favorite one. Yeah, I, would, I used to cover that all the time in that's Tower City. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, it will hopefully be popping up in a lot of uh, easily accessible streaming film fests this year, yeah. Are you working on another film, maybe? Are you writing stuff? Yeah, I'm currently? always writing uh, things, definitely. So pretty much always in the background during my downtime, I'm writing or doing something like that. Yeah. Are you still taking acting lessons? I was loving my classes at Playhouse West, but they're only online now, and the scheduling has been very hard. So mm -hmm. like, my acting now is like when I get an audition or a self-tape, I'll coach with it for someone for like a few days and then do that and I think that is like my private sort of ongoing sure which is good I just I really wish the things at Playhouse West were so great it was the Meisner method which you, you yeah, can't really yeah. do online you have to do in person it's very involved and physical and man I love that place so I don't know to be determined when things start happening again I'll get back in there do you think it's easier or harder to, that everything's a self-tape now it's tricky because it's much easier to do because... Yeah. And you can do a thousand takes. I even did one, you know, when I was at AEW last year, there for a few days. And of course, as soon as I get on the flight, I get a text from the manager. Hey, you have a self-tape due in like 10 hours. I'm like, 
okay, no problem. I could do it in the hotel room. Great. And I had Luchasaurus be my reader with me, and I sent him <laughs> in. <laughs> and of course, you know when you have someone who's not an actor be a reader, they're like so excited. Yeah. This summer I had my aunt uh, do that with me too, and they just feel like, wow, I'm part of Hollywood right now, which is awesome because you don't, around here to get another actor to do it is like twisting an arm, their arms, you know? I'll read with you anytime. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah. Same. Yeah, and I'll read flat so, you know, I'm not taking away from your performance. <laughs> Luchasaurus is so into it, man. That's the thing. When you read with someone who's doing it for the first time, they're like, <clears throat> these pretzels are making me thirsty. <laughs> I knew that was going to be the line that of you said. <laughs> yeah, and they love it, but it was cool. And then while I was there, a different wrestler, Texted me and said, "Hey, can you help me with a secret self tape?" And I was like, "Of course I can. I just, <laughs> I just did my own, no problem." And so, you know, they're easier to do now. You yeah. don't, you don't have to uh, find parking. Yeah, yeah. Battle traffic. Be in a waiting room with other people who look just like you who are mad that you're there. Yeah. Only, you know, walk into that room and you know you're the 19th person to walk in there, <laughs> and they're just staring at you. All right, slate and go. Yeah, yeah. What do you got? So that, that part's good, but the bad part is that then if you book the part and you're on set, suddenly there's cameras and everyone around, which is not in your bedroom or wherever you're filming the audition. Right, but it doesn't matter. You, already, you got it. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. I think the thing, the reason I like the self, and I don't do that many of them, but I like that I can do like 17 different versions, then watch it back on my editing software and go, huh. That's pretty good. Yeah. I thought the fourth take would have been the best, but it's actually the seventh take. As it turns out, yeah. And then when you go in and you do it in person, you've got one shot. That's it, once, yeah. Yeah. Um, do people know what self-tapes are? Should we tell them? Go ahead. Yeah. Self-tape is when you tape your own audition by yourself and give it to the casting yeah. people. Just what it sounds like. Yeah, so it's an audition that, yeah, you film yourself. Yeah, yeah. that's it. I don't want you to just be watching yeah. this and think, I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Click away. You know, I, I pulled this up here and remembered that I had a... I had a fan question, actually. Whoa. Yeah. This, this came from uh, Nick N. Nick N. Okay. Oh, that's too obvious. Um, uh, N. Nemeth. That'll be better. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's confusing. All right. <clears throat> ask him if everything will be... Ask him if everything will all be on the arm. <laughs> <laughs> Little inside joke that you guys don't get. <laughs> I don't get it either. Uh, there were, so this relates to performing at Second City... Uh, Nick has performed with us many times. If whoever this Nick is, yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know who that Nick is. I just, Nemeth, I just mean yeah. my brother Nick. <laughs> this is a different Nick. Yeah, of course. He has played with us a bunch at Second City in Hollywood. Uh, the show is called Flying Chuck, which is a reference to John Morrison's move set. if anyone really cares. They might. Or John... He is John Morrison. I was going to say, yeah. say Johnny Nitro. Oh, he's Morrison, Mundo, That's right, Nitro, Mundo. Impact. So he, uh, there's, <laughs> there's a guy named Mikey Wilson who is a Detroit improv performer. Great dude. During a scene, I think with Sam Richardson maybe, I think a waiter uh, gave them the tab of what their drinks were going to be, and he said, Mikey Wilson taps his arm, and he says, I thought this was all on the arm. Which means, as uh, I found out way later on by looking it up, is an old-timey way of saying on the house. Oh. <laughs> but he used the phrase on the arm. No one knew what that meant. The crowd was laughing out of confusion, and me and my brother in the back were just laughing like, what? <laughs> no one knows what that means. And he's just throwing this out there as if we'll all, like, we're all just like, whoa, yeah, what? what? do you mean you don't know? And the waiter in the scene also was like, I don't know what you're talking about. He goes, on the <laughs> arm, free, you know? And so uh, that's just a little inside joke with my brother and I. It's weird that this fan knew, yeah. knew that little joke. He also said I should call you Cronin O'Brien. <laughs> oh, they're both references to improv stuff. There was a show, uh, what was this, a sports show they used to be on starring Kevin, Kevin Fleming. And they were interviewing Conan O'Brien. He was giving him such a hard time. And they mispronounced his name as Cronin O'Brien. That's... <laughs> <laughs> That's it. These are not fun for these people to watch. No, you know, but all, every time Cronin someone says Conan O'Brien, I love that you mentioned Simpsons because I just think of when Bart went on when he was the I didn't do it guy. Just do the dance. <laughs> or no, don't Sit do it. perfectly dance. still. Just, only I may dance. Only I may dance. Just say the line. Say the line. <laughs> oh, I didn't man. dance. Cronin O'Brien. Speaking of N. Nemeth, take me back to, I know it's one of your favorite matches, one of your favorite moments. Okay. Take me back to you watching Dolph Ziggler cash in on Alberto Del Rio. Oh, yeah, I'll talk all about that. So uh, a few months before that, I was lucky enough to have a match against him in NXT at Kiss, Kissimmee, Florida. Is that how you say it? Kissimmee? Kissimmee? Kiss, is that how you say it? Yeah, I think Kissimmee. so. Kissimmee, okay. Kissimmee. Right? So against D Del Rio or Ziggler? Against Ziggler. Okay. Uh, we wrestled against wow. each other in a tag match. Trent Barreto was in the match. Uh, AJ Lee was part of it, Biggie. Anyway, so 
he had the briefcase at the time, and I was for some reason home with my family. I don't know what I was doing in Cleveland, but we were all were you watching Mania there. We okay because it was the night after Mania. Night after Mania, yeah. I just don't know why I was I was in Cleveland, but I was I was there. Maybe there's some family event or something. And we were all at my grandma's house, and the TV was on. And I sort of had this thought of like, oh, Raw's on. Should we put Raw? Maybe Nick's on. And we turned it to Raw just as Nick's music hit, and he started no coming way. down. And he cashed it in, and the place went nuts. Uh, and my family was going crazy, and I was like, oh, thank God I remember Raw. I like, this is the, because he didn't tell any of us anything, you know? Uh, but yeah, that was awesome. Great, great to watch that with my family, parents, and everybody see that happen. What an awesome moment. Oh man, it's one of my favorite matches. When you watch it back now, do you still get goosebumps? Yes, absolutely. As soon as the music hits, the place goes absolutely insane. That's the loudest I've heard a place be ever. Well, because the build up to that moment, I think he had the briefcase for, I mean, it's close to a year. It was a long time, yeah. It was a long time. It was so long that. And this, I don't know if this happens much anymore. It's so long that you forget that briefcase has the power. You just think it's part of their entrance. Yeah. But in that moment, Del Rio had just been beaten up bad by Randy Orton. Yep. And he's, you know, he's kind of in the corner and they're saying, oh man, you know, Del Rio's in bad shape here. And then Big the music time. hits and it's like, ah, yeah. oh, I know what's happening. But then you kind of don't because you always think he's the kind of guy that gets this close and doesn't win. Mm. And there were so many times in the match where it looked like Del Rio was going to win. And as a family, we're thinking, come on, dude, just give him a break one time. Did, do you know if that match was planned out? Because it looked like they were calling a lot of it in the ring. Like, was he um, planning to cash in that night? I don't think he was planning to cash in. I think, I think a lot of those, I'm not going to speak for him, but sure. it seems like a lot of things on that show are kind of when the boss says they're happening, suddenly everything <laughs> changes. But if I know my brother, a lot of the actual match was probably called because he likes, he prefers that as yeah. much as he can to call things and improvise. What do you think's one thing you've learned from Nick? And this can be wrestling or otherwise mm -hmm. that you now do in your life every day. Um, I try something I've learned the last few years is something I a little bit learned while wrestling him in the kissing me, kissing me. I think it's Kiss Me. Kiss Me. Okay, so yeah, same thing. We had so You're much, saying it, right? so much fun in that match. Uh, Is that the only time you worked with him? There's another time in Orlando where there's a match that we did together. Yeah, but okay. This was a really fun one. It's okay. The main event. There was a packed house. We had relatives in the front row. My uncle Mitchell was there watching. Uh, he was. He had the the briefcase at the time. I think we. It was so fun. It was the most fun, and we did so much. Before the actual bell ring, that like the time the match we had to wrestle already expired before we started wrestling, and I remember the referee being very worried about that. And I think we locked up, and he had me in a hold. And the ref comes over and says, "Okay, they said take it home." And at the time, the person in charge was the person I didn't like. Who he was so he, they tried to get this match canceled. It was an NXT house show match that for weeks my boss was trying to cancel from happening. Meanwhile, the match involves the biggest star in your company at the time packing the house for our show. Why would you not want that match to happen? It was a very frustrating couple of weeks. Huh. And so that match happening just felt like... Uh, yeah, a, yeah, sure, uh, it's the internet. One of these, yeah. you know? And he comes over and says, they, they said take it home. And my brother just looks at him and goes, get the... F <laughs> go, basically go away. And I thought, Wow. You need to just stand up for yourself, basically, because huh. if he listened to that referee, the match would have been lock up, put Ryan in a hold, uh, zigzag over. Huh. And do you think the crowd, the multi, multiple thousands of people who came to see that would be happy with that? Yeah. Of course they wouldn't be happy with that, dude. <laughs> so how much longer did the match end up going on? I'm like I don't know, like 15, 17 more. Like we had a, <laughs> oh we had a fun, God. awesome match. We had a, the cool match we wanted to have. And yeah. it's a house show. What does it matter it, if you take it home? It didn't matter at all. It, hmm. And that was just another way of... That's all. I just felt like the message was stand up for yourself. And uh, if someone's in charge right now, they might not be the next time. So, mm. but you'll always be you. Yeah. So, whatever things are working against you or holding you down, it may change the next time this situation is, is revisited. It's not permanent. So, just always stand up for yourself. Do you think that there's something that you're really proud of that you taught him? That I taught him? Well, he calls himself a comedian now. I like to think I had a little hand in some of that. Is he a comedian? That's what, that's what his Twitter <laughs> bio says, and he says he wrestles part-time. Uh, I think, okay, so I think when we do stage shows together, I at least have a positive influence as far as 
improvising and ad libbing and just going with the flow. I think I hope that is something I've kind of yeah. Because that's my main thing. It's just whatever's happening is fine. It could always be fine and funny. Yeah. Don't really stick to the script that hard. So you, I mean, you do a lot of improv. Do you ever test your hand at stand up? I perform on a lot of stand up shows not doing stand up. So Have you ever thought about doing stand up? Yeah, it's not really for me. <laughs> I like doing characters and okay. bits and other kind of things within a stand up show. So if there's three comics and then Ryan does something weird and then another comic, <laughs> like, that's something I really enjoy doing. So maybe that is called stand up. Some people might say, that's stand up. You're standing up doing something and it's comedy. One sure. man show, maybe? Something like that. Yeah. I like doing variety things or characters or whatever. Yeah. You're like a renaissance man. Hey, man, I'm everywhere. I'm all, I'm all over the place. Just think about yeah. it. Filmmaking, film writing, acting, uh, stunt work, wrestling, mm -hmm. comedy, and you're an artist. And oh, you, my God. Ryan paints dogs. I just, like I told you earlier before we started, I like to make people smile, mm. and so that doesn't really keep me in a box. So whether it's some kind of art, some kind of entertainment, wrestling, acting, whatever. I but, love it. So I said Ryan Paints Dogs because that is your Instagram handle that's for my, your, your art, side yeah. business that you have. You paint people's dogs. I do little dog portraits and water. They're, and they're amazing. Me. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, it, how did this start? Well, uh, I've always been artistically inclined. And sort of when I started wrestling, I stopped doing it. Hmm. And in the past few years, I just, as a hobby, got back into it and then thought, well, this is something I really enjoy. It's peaceful. It's very mindful. I love dogs. And I recently did a portrait of my good friend, Brody Lee. And so Ryan paints dogs and sometimes people, I guess, would be. <laughs> yeah, you loved I, When you parked outside, you were like, oh, a dog. I saw a nice little dog walking <laughs> by. It looked like a, some, some kind of mix with a poodle, I think. I don't know, like, could, something. Sure, it was a Fluffy. small white dog. A small white dog, yeah. You're like, I could paint that. I thought that. I love dogs. You love dogs. Do you have a dog? A dog sit, but I don't have my own dog. That's probably the uh, responsible move. I think it is because I think I'm really good with them and I can take care of them and help if someone needs a hand. But uh, my life is very strange and it's hard to, if I have to be there all the time taking care of a dog, it would be unfair. Well, this is kind of the life of someone who is in the industry that you're in. Yeah. You right. could, at, at just a moment's notice, be working for a week or two or three straight. <laughs> I could just suddenly be wrestling on dynamite for no reason. <laughs> that story's amazing. The, the most unexpected thing. I remember everyone just asking, oh, do you work there now? And I thought, no, I literally do not work here, but this is great. <laughs> I mean, they were, they were advertising and promoting. Like, this, I mean, this is a big deal. It was cool. They did that promo package for Road to Dynamite on YouTube. We got yeah. to film it in Venice. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I, I think I was wearing this jacket in the video probably it's it's perfect so this is how people will be able to recognize the jacket yeah it looks good doesn't look anything like nick nemeth at all he does not have this jacket i think no. he'd be pretty jealous of it he probably. would be totally jealous of it i've really enjoyed this well thanks for having me I've no thank you time. so much i end every interview i'm very driven by gratitude i hope it's not sports trivia no no oh, it's not at all. Thing. i end every interview i'm very driven by gratitude okay. i think that if you can be grateful you can live a great life so I'm curious, Ryan, what are three things in your life that you're grateful for right now? Right this moment? Right okay, this moment. so my family, I think about them a lot. I would say dogs. I love dogs. <laughs> and, well, the thing you just said about finding your tribe, not just that, but a half hour ago, I think in my life I've cultivated a very good tribe of people. I feel like I'm the center of a few different tribes or in, you know, involved in a lot of really amazing groups of people. So those three things, I think. Mm, those are three great things. Thank you. What about you? You got you have different answer every week, or do you know the one? Oh, for me? Yeah, yeah. I actually, the people want to know. I start and end every day with gratitude. Actually. Oh, you're all about it. I, I mean, because if if you're in a grateful mindset, it's hard to be pissed off. Like because otherwise, if you have these expectations about things, you're always going to be let down. So Tony Robbins says, if you can trade your expectations for appreciation, wow, then you'll never be let down. Because in every moment, you'll just be like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy that this thing is happening. So for me, my family, my parents have been married for 46 years. Wow. And have given this incredible example of love and union partnership. So my family, in this weird, strange time that we're living in right now, my health. Perfect. And I'm really grateful that I get to do stuff like this. Wow. Like the fact that we just hung out for an hour and six minutes. And yeah. Yeah, right. Look at that. I don't wear a watch. I, right away, <laughs> I'm wearing like, a watch on this. Day. You don't have one. It's just so cool to be able to 
learn from people like you who are extremely talented at what they do wow. and just find out a little bit of how you got to where you got. And I'm really grateful for that. Well, thanks for having me on here. Hey, it's great what you just said about uh, not having all these expectations. I've been trying to think about that the past month. Hmm. I'm just kind of enjoying the moment and not worrying about what's to happen or not happen because, like you said, it's just full of disappointment. You can't control it, so just go moment to moment and have a good time. Yeah, and I think that there's always people who are like, well, what if I did this? Would, you know, then this thing might happen. I think that what has happened is always going to happen. Whoa. Right? And because this other decision you made along the way, hap you know, this thing happened, it led you to be sitting here right now Dang. in this moment. Well, wow, that's uh, pretty wild to think about. But I think that I, I'm, look, maybe, maybe you know, not everybody agrees with that, but that's how I think that Yeah, some it people is. are getting so mad in the comments right now. <laughs> how dare you say that? Well, and I get that like bad things happen, good things happen as well. Yeah. There's a, a little secret sign on the side of this place right now that says, be great, be grateful. Yeah. He's, he's living what he says. I have a t-shirt that says that too. There you go. You can buy it down below if you're watching on YouTube. Yeah. Buy it, buy everything. So you can find Ryan. Well, tell him where where can they find you right now till we till we figure out your Twitter account. A very easy method is just to in your search bar type Ryan Nemeth because it all shows up. My, I think my real Instagram, my real Twitter, both pop up. But well, if there you, you go. If you need it uh, on Twitter, it's Hot Young Briley. And for on, now. On Instagram, for it's now. Rye Rye Nem Nem. For now, yes. For now. Yeah, we'll figure that out. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.